In this video, we'll be learning about the IGCSE chemistry topic, separating techniques for various mixtures and we'll also see what are the various apparatus used for the separation. So when we talk about separating mixtures, first we need to know what are the different types of mixtures. Based on the types of mixture, the method of separating the mixtures will vary. So let's first see what are the different types of mixtures we, we will be coming across and accordingly we will choose the technique. So the first type of mixture can be a solid solid mixture and the second mixture can be a solid liquid mixture, we can have a liquid liquid mixture and we can have a gas and gas mixture also and we need to use different techniques to separate such mixtures. So starting with solid and solid mixture, we might have a sieving method, we will uh, study in detail next that what are these methods but let's just understand the names of different methods used for separating such mixtures. So the second method can be using a suitable solvent and the third technique can be chromatography to separate these solid solid mixtures. Now let's go ahead with the solid liquid mixture. The technique can be of filtration if the solid liquid mixture is an insoluble solid mix with the liquid. So here we can add that the solid is insoluble. If the solid is insoluble, we can use the filtration method. The second method can be a simple distillation method. Now simple distillation method can be used when the solid is a soluble in the liquid used or the solvent used. So this is the method. So depending on the type of mixture and the type of solid which is mixing, we can use the method. The third method for the solid liquid mixture can be crystallization. Now we'll study again that what's the difference between simple distillation and crystallization that is when to use these uh, techniques. Next if we go for the liquid liquid mixture then we can have a separating funnel. Again separating funnel can be used when the liquids are immiscible that is the two liquids mixed it does not mixed with each other then we can use the separating funnel to separate them and if the liquids are miscible we can use fractional distillation if we go ahead with a gas gas mixture then the only technique we are left with is the fractional distillation and that is totally based on the difference in the boiling point of gases which are mixed together so let's go ahead with the first method sieving now as we have already seen that this method is used when we have the mixture of different solids solid solid mixture and it can be more than two three solids also so sieving is a method when the mixture of the solid consists of different sized particles in the solids so what is the simple method is use a sieve of different size different sized sieve can be used to separate the mixture of different sized solids for example if we have a mixture of sand and gravel now obviously sand is smaller in size than the gravel or even if we have a bigger sands uh, bigger stones mixed with this plus stones you can add here so if we have then we can again use two different sized sieve to separate all these so first if we have a very tiny sized sieve we can separate the sand here we can see that sand we have obtained because the sieve size was used in such a way that gravel cannot pass through but the sands are passing through and we can get the sand similarly if we use a little bigger sized sieve then we can even separate gravels from stones because stones will be too bigger than the gravels so this is a simple method of sieving to separate solids of different sized now let's go ahead with the next method that is using a suitable solvent. Now this method is used when the mixture of solids are soluble in different solvents. For example, we might have two solids which one of the solid might be soluble in water but the other sol uh, solid might be soluble in an inorganic solvent like ethanol or propanone. So using a suitable solvent we can use the mm, mixture to separate. For example if we have such first we can add uh, water to the mixture and uh, we can separate the solid which is soluble in water so we can add water dissolve the solid and filter so the next step is 
uh, after adding the water is filter out the solid which is not soluble in water and that is how we can use if we still have one more mixture we can again add an ethanol and remove out the third solid also now obviously if we have added water we can evaporate out the water to get back the solid so this is how we can use a suitable solvent method to separate the solids which are soluble in different solvents this is specially done when a uh, few solids are soluble in water and other in the organic solvent now third method for separation of solids is chromatography now let's understand this is actually not a separation technique but it's an analyzing technique it's an analytical technique that is to identify the solid which is present in our mixture we cannot separate but we can identify so when the mixture have a colored solids or even if the solids are colorless this technique is used to identify its presence by calculating the rf value Uh, with the uh, raw data so first we need to perform the chromatography calculate the rf value obtained for different solids and then comparing these rf values with the raw data that will give us an idea that what kind of solid is present now we'll study these technique in detail in the next video but let's see just a simple technique that here we have used a chromatography paper now chromatography paper can be a simple a filter paper also which is an absorbent what we can do is draw a line with the pencil which we call it as an origin line and then add the drop of a mixture here on the pencil line or the base line which we have drawn use a suitable solvent to carry out the chromatography and understand the level of the solvent should be lower than the mixture now if we allow it to stand for some time the solvent will carry the mixture and we can see that there are three separate spots obtained now that shows that the mixture carried three different solids into the mixture and this method is based on the difference in the solubility of these three solids in the given solvent which we have used we'll study these in detail in the next video for now we can understand that chromatography is the analytical technique to identify the mixture solids in the mixture the next method is filtration now this is to separate the solid liquid mixture when the solid is insoluble in the liquid now this is a very simple technique where we can use a filtrate filtrate funnel funnel is used and we can use any uh, apparatus below it which can be a conical flask conical flask is a better option but we can even use a beaker then fit the filter funnel with the filter paper now this is filter paper once this is done we can allow the mixture to pass through it and the liquid will pass through which is called a filtrate the common word for the liquid which is the solvent in which we had mixed the insoluble solid which we have obtained after filtration is called filtrate and the solid will stay back in the filter paper and the common name for the substance which is left left over is a residue so this is a simple method for separating insoluble solid mixed with the liquid now the next method to separate an solid liquid mixture where the solid is soluble in the liquid used now this is called a simple distillation method we can see that here we are using a simple distillator or we can also call it as an condenser now this is a simple condenser that is fit with the flask here and on the top we have closed this flask with a bung with a thermometer added to it now this thermometer is required you can see that the bulb is here at the mouth of the flask now this is required uh, to find out the boiling point of the mixture so here what what are we doing is taking the mixture and heating it fitted with the flask bung thermometer and the condenser and with the condenser we can see that there are two 
pipes joined here now this is for the passing of the water that shows that from here the water will be added and from here the water moves out now this is to cool down the condenser so that the liquid which has evaporated and passed out here will pass through the condenser and will cool down in the pipe or in the tube which is there inside the condenser due to the passage of water and so the gas will turn back into the liquid and it can be obtained from the condenser and collected into the flask so here we are separating a liquid with the help of a condenser which we are boiling off with the help of heating and thermometer and then we are cooling it down back to condensing it back to liquid and after heating the leftover material will be the solid which we have mixed here in the mixture so this is a separating technique for separating a solid and a liquid in which the solid is soluble a very simple method again but then we need to use a condenser to get back the liquid here the next method is crystallization now again this is a method of separating solid liquid mixture here again the solid is a soluble that's why it's a mixture where the solid is not visible but when this method is used we will get back the solid from the liquid and we won't get back the liquid so liquid is evaporated out so the only thing which will get back is the solid so this is a method when we uh, want to just get back the solid from the solid liquid mixture now what is here is that a uh, liquid solid liquid mixture is something like we use a solvent to dissolve the solid which we want to get back the solid should be soluble in the solvent used and then what we are doing is that we are using an evaporating basin that is evaporating disc we are using and we are evaporating the liquid or the solvent which we are doing with the help of Bunsen burner and the tripod stand. Now once the liquid has started evaporating in boiling we can heat it till crystallization point. Now what is crystallization point? crystallization point is there in the next diagram we can see that on the side walls of the container here we can see that the crystals have started appearing now at this point where the crystal starts appearing can be seen on the walls of the operating dish that point is called crystallization point and that point we can stop heating the mixture allow it to cool down so once the mixture cools down and we can use the filtration again so that the liquid which is left over the solvent which is left over can be filtered out and on the filter paper if we allow it to cool down we will get back the crystals of the solid which is soluble in the liquid so this is called crystallization method i repeat again it is a method used where solid is soluble in the liquid but we want to get back only the solid the liquid or the solvent is not important to us so such method is called crystallization okay now the next method is the method of separating two liquids and these two liquids are immiscible with each other for example oil and a water if such mixtures are mixed the oil cannot mix with the water that is oil is insoluble in water and once it is shaken oil is going to form a separate layer from the water so for such a liquid liquid mixture where the liquids are immiscible we can use a separating funnel to separate such mixtures of liquids now this is the separating funnel used where we can add the mixture shake it and allow it to stand for some time on the uh, stand with the help of a stand we can allow it to stand we can see here that the two different layers have formed on the top will be a liquid which is low density and at the bottom will form a layer of liquid which is higher in density and then here we have a tap which we can open and allow the liquid which is high density to drop down slowly and we can collect it in any container 
now if we allow it to drop down very slowly we can even separate the last drop of the liquid which is forming a layer at the bottom and once that is done we can stop the tap close the tap and we can uh, obtain the second mixture in a separate beaker or separate apparatus so this is how we can um, separate the two liquids which are immiscible with itself and use the separating funnel to separate it yeah the next method is fractional distillation method now again this is a method where we can use the separation of a liquid liquid mixture or even a mixture of gas to gas mixture can be separated with the help of fractional distillation now here we can see this setup where we know just like a simple distillation we have used a flask here we are labeling the flask here in the flask we have a mixture of liquids here first example we are taking for the liquid liquid mixture so we have taken the mixture of liquids here now this is something called a fractionating column this is fractionating column now why is this added here here is the simple distillator or the condenser which we have already seen in the simple distillation here but then the additional thing which we have added here is the fractionating column now what why is this needed the first thing is that we are using this method based on the difference in the boiling point of the two liquids difference in the boiling point of the two liquids so what's going to happen is that we need a fractionating column is because the liquid which is having a low boiling point also may evaporate to some extent even before its boiling point so the liquid which is having a lower boiling point the liquid which is having a lower boiling point will evaporate out first will move out and pass through the condenser and will turn back into liquid by condensing and can be collected but by the time this is happening even if the liquid with the higher boiling point may evaporate to some extent so this fractionating column is going to do what is going to condense back the other liquid with the higher boiling point back to the liquid and is going to fall back inside the flask so this is why a fractionating column is required to separate a liquids of different boiling points so this is called a fractional distillation this is called a fractionating column and so we need a fractionating column along with the condenser for such separation so once the liquid with the lower boiling point has fully condensed and separately collected in the flask then after some time when the boiling point of the second liquid has reached we can always measure the boiling point with the thermometer here fitted so the second liquid which is having a higher boiling point will then start evaporating out again and we can collect it separately in a different flask so fractionating column condenser as usual the flask with the bunsen burner and some other apparatus like conical flask or beaker to collect the different liquid here is needed now how are we going to use the same method for the gas gas mixture now here again we'll need a fractionating column but we cannot use a simple flask like this so we need a separate apparatus the way we separate the petroleum mixture similarly we'll need a separate apparatus so that we um, condense and liquefy all the gas mixture so what we are going to do is first cool down all the gases to liquid and then store uh, slowly and gradually start warming the liquid which are condensed from the gas and then gradually turn wise we will get the gases as a liquid once it starts boiling again or reaches its boiling point so this is how we can use uh, the similar method for the gas gas mixture also but obviously the apparatus, uh, apparatus which is shown here is for liquid liquid mixture the gas gas will have a separate type of fractionating column 
so these are the different methods for separation or techniques for the different types of mixtures in the next video we will learn about chromatography in detail so here are different methods you can always go back to the first page where we have made a flow chart of different uh, mixtures and different techniques used for it